Good evening all, and welcome. Given all the hubbub about Area 51, it was you lovely subscribers who decided that tonight you would like to have a dose of the unknown. Tonight we delve into the strange and eerie world of aliens and other supernatural occurrences. So get ready, because it's time to get comfortable. Get your probes ready, and let the darkness take control. My family moved from the Maryland Mountains to West Palm Beach, Florida, when I was seven. Waterbeds were trendy at the time, so everyone in the house had one. On a few occasions, I would wake up to this odd smell in the air. I couldn't put my finger on how to describe it as a kid, so my folks didn't think much of it, and said it was the plastic waterbeds I was smelling. One night in particular sticks out in my mind, where I woke up to that weird odour, but there was someone with me. I thought it was my dad, because he told me he would be in to check on me. When I rolled over to look, I was caught completely off guard by… snake people. Three of them. Their faces looked like a snake-human hybrid, and they had big, slitted eyes. I doubt they were more than three and a half feet tall, and they were watching me. I was frozen in fear staring back at them, while my waterbed sloshed from me rolling over. Next thing I know, it's morning, and I'm eating breakfast. Years later, my mother and I are out taking a walk. It looks like it's gonna storm any minute, and there's a strong smell of ozone in the air. She looks at me and says, that's the same smell from when the aliens took you. And she tells me about when we first moved to Florida. Three little lizard men took me to a saucer in our yard. She wanted to stop them at first, but they convinced her I would be okay and wouldn't remember anything. So she went back to her bedroom and watched the saucer go into the sky from the window, leaving that strong ozone smell. After that, she went back to bed and apparently never thought to tell me until I was 30. Now, every time I smell a storm coming, I get the willies. The following stories are from an uncle on my mother's side. He's a considerably conservative man in his approach to most things, from political to taste in film as he generally considers any cinema post-1950s to be absolute garbage. And I feel I should mention his disdain for the genres of horror and science fiction in entertainment before I continue. That said, I was surprised when a few years ago, I made a passing comment regarding alien abduction. For the life of me, I have no idea what prompted this, and he spoke seriously and mentioned two encounters of his own. He seemed excited to share the stories, and enjoyed me listening to them. The first took place inside of a flat he rented in the mid-80s. The location was Stretford Road, Manchester, UK. Apparently, my uncle looks out of his bedroom window, when a flying saucer appears directly opposite, and sits still in the air. There are a row of windows separating the top and bottom of this saucer, and inside are the shapes of people moving around. The saucer idles for around 10 seconds, and then completely disappears. To this day, he claims the story to be genuine. Then, around the mid-80s, somewhere in Manchester, UK, my uncle used to be a mechanic. He was working at a friend's car at home, and needed a particular part, as the one he's looking at is severely damaged. He takes the part to another garage, hoping to negotiate price on a replacement, and asks the only guy working there, 
if he has one. The guy smiles, takes the part from my uncle, and then returns 10 seconds later with the same part, and one completely identical. By identical, I mean that my uncle described it as a duplicate of the original, damaged in the exact same places, with the same blemishes and tells. Confused, my uncle takes the part from the mechanic, and as he studied them, the mechanic bursts into hysterics. Thinking it's a prank, my uncle calls Bull, and asks where he got the part, to which the mechanic replies that he made it. My uncle left the shop with both parts, dumbfounded as how the mechanic had produced the identical part. Without reason, my uncle insists that this mechanic was an alien or something otherworldly. But I always thought his mind was tilted towards this explanation as per his alleged saucer experience. As for a possible explanation, it makes sense that car parts would be subject to similar examples of damage, and perhaps the mechanic in question noticed my uncle's part looked uncannily similar to one of his own, and saw room for a prank. Certainly explains the laughter. I'll have to apologise for the sparsity of detail in this one. I regret it was hard to find these out. I always thought of this story as its best to be weird, and at its worst to be casually explainable. I live surrounded by the forest, about a mile away from a haunted lake. I have recurring and painfully vivid nightmares of what I always assume are wendigos and skimwalkers, staring into my window or coming out of the woods, or coming into my home, almost weekly. Prior to these, I haven't had any nightmares since I was perhaps seven or eight. I never ever knew of the idea of humanoids before these nightmares began. They're actually the reason I've been researching everything the past few months. I've heard some creepy stuff at night as well. Notably when I'm outside in my hot tub at around 1 to 3 a.m. and can hear large branches snapping closer and closer to my house and scuffled steps. I always assumed it was an animal, but now I'm not so sure. July 13th, 2017. My friends and I went to get ice cream at night. Snapchat says it was around 10 p.m. when the photos were taken so it was within the 9.30 to 10.30 time frame. I live in a heavily wooded mountainous and desolate area of southern Pennsylvania. I am actually in the Lycan Loop, an area where humanoids and supernatural creatures are often reported in Pennsylvania. I also live about a half hour away from both Camp David and Raven Rock Mountain. Fun fact. I've been to Camp David, and it's a pretty creepy place. Some believe that humanoids could be due to the government, which is why I've included it. Anyway, we were driving back home from getting ice cream, and just having fun, and I decided to take photos of my friends in the back seat. I was probably snapchatting someone, and just sending photos back and forth. I took two photos, and in the first one, something creepy appeared in the rear window. I immediately saved it, and looking back at the window, but neither me or my friend in the back could see anything. I took another picture for good measure, but it was no longer there. I took these pictures in total darkness with flash on. I highly doubt this could be some sort of reflection or glare. There's no glares or reflections on any of the windows, or any of the photos. In any other circumstances, I take photos like this. I see no glares or reflections. That being said, why is the face so bright and easy to see? Was it just a trick of the phone? 
Naysayers are fond of deriding believers in high strangeness, for their excessive reliance on anecdotal material. Seldom does the unknown sit still for a portrait, much less for a DNA analysis or the questions of a fact checker. So the currency of the elusive realm of the paranormal will be the anecdotal for a long time to come, especially when we receive tantalising bits of material from sources like Venezuela's El Tiempo newspaper, in which writer Segundo Peña writes of a strange incident in the city of Merida, Venezuela, involving a faculty member of the University of the Andes, a native of Trujillo, who walks to his car in the university parking lot in broad daylight, seen by many witnesses, including waving students and fellow professors. He opens the door, enters the vehicle, and was never seen again. The car remained parked where it was. The car's owner, writes Peña in his article, has been gone for over 40 years. We did not mention his name out of the respect for his family. Was this person abducted by strange alien forces in our own dimension? Science pursues its general research, where psychology is aware that in many cases of perceptual illusions, Erroneous interpretations, hallucinations, and fantasy-prone personalities have sway, but the enigma is still present and unresolved. Benya gives us no dates and no names, but the strange case is reminiscent of many other bizarre disappearances that have filled entire books over the past 40 years. One can fancifully think that he entered his car and suddenly found himself in the same parking lot in a parallel reality, unmindful of the situation until subtle differences, subtle terrors to be frank, made him realise that something was drastically different, or that he had lost his mind. We can speculate away. However, we are also faced with cases that give us a wealth of information, that go far beyond the anecdotal. Alberto Luis Fernández, director of Spain's magazine Avalon, posted the intriguing story of a woman who believes herself to have been brought into our reality from another. We cannot be certain that this is not a hoax, but it is nevertheless an interesting story, and if true, it could happen to us when we least expect it, says Fernández as a foreword to the story. In July 2008, a woman named Lorena Garcia posted a message to a website asking for help. Hello, my name is Luz. I'm 41 and believe that I have jumped into a parallel universe. It's hard for me to discuss this, as everyone will think I'm psychotic and thus refuse to believe me. Please. If someone has had a similar experience, get in touch. One day, I woke up and found that everything was different. Nothing spectacular, or having to do with time travel and such. I simply woke up in the same year and day on which I went to sleep. But many things were not as they should have been. Small things, but sufficiently important to know that there was a point in which everything was different. In fact, if this is a dream, then you're all in a dream. Because what I'm writing about doesn't exist. So if someone replies, it means that they are experiencing the same reality as I am, whether it's a dream or not. Four months ago, I awoke on a normal morning. I was in my rented home, where I had been living for the past seven years. Everything was the same except that my bed linen was different, and I paid no attention at the time. So I got into my car and went to work, which was parked where I always parked it. I drive to the same office that I had worked at for the last 20 years. But when I got to my department, it wasn't my department. It had names on the door, and mine wasn't on it. I thought I was on the wrong floor, but no, it was my own floor. 
So I went over to the office's wireless section and looked myself up. I still worked there, but in another department, reporting to a superior I didn't even know. So I went to the department indicated in the directory, and I said I was feeling ill and left. All the contents of my handbag were the same, my credit cards, my ID, everything. But I didn't recall having changed departments at any time. I went to the social security doctor and underwent drug and alcohol testing, all clean. I returned to work the next day and was able to make my way by asking questions and saying that I wasn't feeling well. My apartment is the same, everything is unchanged. I looked at all the papers that I've kept in the house, they're the same. After realizing that something strange was going on, I thought it might be some form of amnesia. Perhaps something so bad had happened to me, I couldn't remember a period of my life. But no, I logged onto the internet, and everything was as it should have been, and the major news items were still there as the day before. I've been separated from my partner of seven years for some six months. We broke up and I started a relationship with a fellow from my neighborhood. I knew him perfectly well, having been with him for only four months. I know his name, surname, addresses, where he works, his son from another relationship, and where he studies. Well, that fellow no longer exists. He appeared to have existed before my jump, but there's no trace of him now. I've hired a detective to find him, and he does not exist on this plane. I visited a psychiatrist, and it's all been put down to stress. He thinks they're hallucinations, but I know this isn't the case. My former boyfriend is still with me, and though nothing has happened, apparently we never broke it off, and Agustin, my current boyfriend, appears to have never existed, and he doesn't live in the flat he used to live in, and I can't find his son. I swear to you that it's true and that I'm very sane. My own family doesn't remember things like surgery performed on my sister's shoulder a few months ago. She's never been operated on, and small things to that effect. Unfortunately, I can't remember very big important things from the news, but the rest of the world appears to be the same. There are many small details over the last five months, and now, mere trivialities clothing in my closet that I don't remember buying, posts on a radio show blog that I had with my ex, who remains my boyfriend now. I don't know, it's foolish, but the fact is that I am sane, and this is all true. Please, if anyone has ever experienced anything like this, please contact me to see what may have happened. I can't find any pathology that matches my experience. For five months, I've been reading all the theories I've come across, and I'm convinced that I have jumped between planes or something. A decision or action taken has caused things to change. What upsets me is that I'm in the same year, not in a different time. And I'm exactly the same. Let me explain. It's as though I had lost my memory five months ago, and woke up having dreamed those five months with the exception of everyone remembers me during that time, and I've done things that I'm not aware of having done. Has anyone ever experienced something similar? Pranksters and people with a grasp on the truth can refrain from commenting. This is very serious to me. Thank you. Luz. Could Luz have experienced some trauma to the brain? That wonderful and largely unexplored realm that has led her to forget critical aspects of her existence, such as the division she worked for at her place of employment, or more importantly, hallucinate a love affair with someone who she cannot find after a breakup with her original partner. An email message is only worth the electrons it was composed with, and we only have Luce's word for her medical visits and diagnosis. We know that insect bites have triggered abnormal brain functions in humans, that blows to the head, have caused people to speak different languages, speak with odd accents, or even gain telepathic or psychic abilities. Might we suggest 
that Luz was tuning into another reality for a certain period of time, rather than actually living in one. I suppose we'll never know. When I took the plane to Istanbul with my classmates in 2012 or 2013, I saw somewhere over the route from Germany to Turkey, a weird black round object in the sky. When I told my female friend who was sitting next to me, we both started freaking out and filmed the entire thing. But you can't see it on our cell phones since there were too many water droplets on the window and that black thing was too far away. It was something small and round, and some other round object was flying around the main object, surrounded by black smoke. It was so beautiful. I was sure it was some technology from the government. I regret not screaming inside the plane and making everyone aware of it. Imagine everyone if they'd have seen it. They'd have freaked out and our plane would have probably gone missing. What if it was top secret? But jokes aside, I'll never forget this incident. When I told my aunt, she told me that I was too stressed and needed to take a break as I was imagining things. My next two encounters where I saw something strange, I can't explain either. I was in elementary school, sixth grade, I was outside going to our PE classes with my female friend in tow, when I wanted to get inside this building. I saw in front of me some kind of small white cloud passing by. As weird as it sounds, it was flying by really fast. I told my friend, and she also saw it, but we didn't talk about it again until later. I remember I saw this kind of cloud in my young age again. I don't remember where it was, but I remember I saw this cloud twice. I believe that we were living in a dimension where we can't see everything. For example, that cats and dogs can see things we cannot. Perhaps that cloud was from somewhere where we weren't supposed to see it. I tried finding information on Google regarding both incidences but I have found nothing. There is one final entry. When I was a child, I slept next to my mother. One night, someone came and put my arm up, which hurt me so I screamed. The person ran away, and my mum asked me what happened. She told me I shouldn't be scared, that it was my dad. Until today, I can't believe this. When asking my parents, they tell me it was my dad who came and tried to change my bad sleeping position. I can't believe this, because why would he run away when I started to scream and cry? He's not like that. Not to mention the person or thing I saw looked scary. It was dark, and he was pitch black looking, and I could only see his eyes. All I could see was a silhouette. Believe me or not, since then, I've had bad dreams of this person every night when I fall asleep on my left side. I remember my mum told me once when we were sleeping on our left side that we have bad dreams. Maybe she was joking, but it left a big impact on me. Every night, I tried to make sure I didn't sleep on my left side so that I wouldn't see that person again. I saw him several years later. It was a real trauma for me, and I really don't think it was my dad. Finally, there's one more. I was with my family in the living room. All my cousins were there. They'd come from the Netherlands to visit. In the evening, we were telling each other creepy stories. After that, we went into the living room, watched some TV and talked. Suddenly, I saw the other room, where lights were still turned on. I could see on the wall the shadow of a water bottle, but there was something round and huge flying around it. Actually, I kept staring at it and wondering what it could be. Then it stopped. It was very strange. 
I wish I knew what it was. This happened 10 years ago. My parents agreed not to tell me about it because they knew it would terrify me. I only found out recently because my older brother let it slip. To preface this story, both of my parents are extremely rational people, both scientists and skeptics, but they don't like to talk about this because they can't explain it. They won't admit it, but I can tell it scared them and they would change the subject whenever I bring it up. I've gone to great lengths to try and find a reasonable explanation for the following, but all I have are scraps. My mother has admitted to me, despite her non-believing nature, that if there's anyone who could have had contact with the supernatural or extraterrestrials, it would be me. She tells me that sometimes as a baby, I'd look at her and she'd get chills down her spine, like there was something I knew. From a very young age, I had an innate and irrational fear of the classic alien image. My dad, being a bit of a prankster, used to get a kick out of hiding a little glow-in-the-dark plushy green alien on my shelf, because he knew that I would start screaming in terror from my crib the moment I saw it. Recently, I was going through old home videos and found footage of me, three years old, sitting at the foot of my little bed, wordlessly staring at the toy across the room. Before I could get up and pace back and forth to the window to peek out the blinds up at the sky and pace back, in the video, my dad asked me why I wasn't scared. I told him it was because it wasn't dark outside. My family used to spend summers at our cottage home in the middle of nowhere, Nova Scotia. By middle of nowhere, I really mean it. Our road is unpaved, and the land itself used to be a cattle farm run by my great-great-grandfather before it was sold and overgrown. We have very minimal internet connection, as it's a recent development too, that we have to get via radio tower from the next town over. There have been nights when my dad and I have been outside stargazing, as he fancies himself an amateur astronomer, and we've seen satellite-like objects moving low in the sky in a zigzag, unpredictably and impossibly smooth in motion, before it disappeared. There's no flashing to indicate a passenger aircraft or helicopter, and it's always far too fast. My dad's reaction is usually just, Oh, that's weird, and we forget about it. One night, my mother woke up to the phone ringing. You know that state of being half awake, where you take a few moments to process anything, and you're not sure if you're in a dream? That's how she described what was happening. She picked it up and heard no dial tone, only the continued ringing of the phone before she realised it wasn't ringing in the regular pattern of long, short, short. More like a completely irregular sequence of half rings and drawn out ones. This happened a few more times before she'd woken up enough to sit up in bed and notice that she thought it was daylight outside, and was actually a sky so solidly bright purple, it was luminescent, accompanied by the sound we can only describe as the noise made by the TARDIS in Doctor Who. She said this half laughing. The electric radio clock next to the phone flashed something around 3.15am, but it was clearly broken, as if the power had gone out despite the phone ringing, and needed to be reset. By this time, my dad had also woken up and confirmed that they were both seeing and hearing the same thing. Somehow, and without any further memory, they both went back to sleep. The next morning, there was no evidence of what happened, except the radio clock needing to be reset. No other appliances in the house were affected. My bedroom is an attic-style space on the other side of the house, 
and the only way to get up to me is to climb up a ladder, as I like being high, as it makes me feel safe. My mum asked me tentatively if I had any weird dreams, and apparently that night I dreamt I was flying. My dreams have always been surreally vivid. There was a period of time after learning about this story, I was seriously worried I may have been abducted, and I'm starting to worry that they're going to come back for me. This happened to my friend Devon and I, about five years ago. I don't want to release exactly where this occurred, for the sake of anonymity. You see, Devon and I had been close friends since we were kids. I remember me and my mum and my friends all hanging out at the park and taking pictures when we were younger. He was like a second son to my mother. We grew up playing video games, eating junk food, staying up late, climbing out the windows and sneaking off into each other's houses doing all those goofy things that kids do. We fought, made up, and have a long, long history of friendship. He was my best friend. We had spent all our childhood and teenage years together. We'd gotten relationships and slowly drifted apart as our lives, wives, and priorities took hold. We were both about 35 when this happened. His wife Emma, and my wife Jane, were gonna go do their own thing with the kids, and it was just a man's weekend going hunting. Me, and my bro. It was late in the night, we had already established our camp, and were making a plan of where we were going to go next. We were quite familiar with the terrain, as we had hunted here before, and were very excited for what tomorrow would bring, and what we could possibly hunt. The last time we'd come out, you see, our hunt was uneventful, and we returned home empty-handed. This pushed us further, to aim to get something good. As we were discussing our plan, did we notice a strange sound off in the distance? Sort of like a hum, a very low hum, almost magnetic sounding, if that makes sense. We both in unison, stop talking, and look up into the sky where the sound is coming from. There's nothing but a blanket of stars, and our pale firelight illuminating our small camp. We listen, attently. The sound is still there, and very real, however we can't sense exactly where it's coming from. We're getting a bit put off, continue making our plan. And by the time we're finished, it's still there. It's really bothering us. We agree the best course of action would probably be to go to sleep. Perhaps we're just hearing things. It must be some strange animal we've never heard, we thought. Animals do make weird sounds. We both go to sleep in our individual tents and pass out. There's something, though, that bothered me. And a few hours later, the sound had changed. It was more powerful than before. And I swore I could see bright lights flashing over my tent. I thought he was messing with me. So in my sleepy haze, I open the tent and look around. Lights are coming from above. And I can see some sort of object floating just above. It is definitely the genesis of this strange noise, now louder than ever. All that I remember is passing out, and waking up in the morning, far past the hour of which I should have awoken. My phone alarm didn't even go off. I wasn't sure what was happening then. So I picked myself up off the dirt, and looked around. Our campfire had long extinguished. And I looked over to Devon's tent. He wasn't in there. I poked around, shouted his name, but there was no reply anywhere. I was quite scared. Had he started the hunt without me? 
I looked into his tent one more time, and found his gear stashed underneath his sleeping bag, which was empty. I opened it up all the way, and that was it. It was completely empty, the bag. He was nowhere to be seen. I tried putting my fear aside, assuming that he'd probably just gone to the toilet. So I shouted his name into the wilderness and received no reply. I found this very daunting and I sat there for what felt like hours and he didn't return. By this point, I was getting absolutely terrified that my friend had died in the wilderness. So I left the camp after sending him a text and started to leave. I did all the necessary proceedings regarding a search and rescue to try and getting found because I was incredibly concerned for my friend. The weird thing was, when I called my wife and told her he was missing, she didn't know who I was talking about. I told her that he was my best friend, and this wasn't a time to mess around, especially with him gone. Note, I omitted everything about the lights and the noise last night. She started getting angry at me, telling her that I was just wasting her time and not to work her up over nothing and that I sounded drunk or high and that I should come home now. I was beyond pissed. What was going on here? I look through my phone and find the number of Devon's wife, give her a call, but she doesn't pick up. I send her a text asking if she'd heard from him. And a few hours later, I receive a reply. Who is this? What the hell? was going on. Safe to say, they never found his body. They never found anything. When I got home, everyone I spoke to was acting like I was going insane. I learned to drop the subject. I have no idea what's going on. It's like that night, he was erased from reality. Every trace of him, his wife, who apparently we don't speak to and don't even know, his family, I'd never met. My mum didn't even know who he was. And the pictures of him and I together as children, I can no longer find, both electronically and physically. He doesn't exist, and I'm the only person that remembers him. Have I gone insane? Some people believe I fell on a rock. That's why I woke up that way and imagined this whole thing. But that can't be real. Can it? Devon buddy, if you're out there, send me a sign. I think I'm losing my mind. I saw an alien. No joke. To this day, I still wonder if I was somehow tripping on something I ate. I was about 10 years old and was playing in my room by myself. It was about 11 p.m. I had a sliding glass door in my room and the blinds were pulled back. Out of nowhere, the automatic spotlight behind my house turned on. I looked to the sliding glass door and a figure started approaching the door. At first, I thought it was my neighbor who was older than me, and about the same height. But as it got closer, I realized it was something else. I remember it approaching the door slowly. It stopped at the sliding glass door for a few seconds, and just started staring at me. It felt like an eternity passed by. Like, I remember specifically how long it felt when in reality, it was probably only a few seconds. I remember it was dark black. It had a rounded head, just like you see in the movies, and was about six foot tall. Two arms, two legs, really skinny. The only thing is, that it was so close to me right on the other side of the glass, that there's no way I could have mistaken it for a human. 
I know what I saw. After a few seconds of staring at me, it just turned to the side and walked away. Long strides. It went out of view, and I immediately ran out of my room and screamed for my mum. She didn't believe me. I had to sleep in my room that night, knowing I had seen a legit alien a few feet away from me earlier. I'm now 23, and to this day I still get chills when I think about it. My eyes always start watering when I do think of it. I know it was not a dream. I know what I saw. But alas, no one believes me. The thing that creeps me out the most was its demeanour. I remember it coming slowly up to me, and walking slowly away. That's what scares me the most. Like there's no rush, it was just watching me. I believe in aliens, but I don't really believe in aliens visiting Earth, so it's been quite hard to cope with. I think what I saw is what people call a grey. If anyone else has seen anything like it, I'd love to hear about it. I was about nine or ten. It was late at night, and my bed was right under the window. I was just gazing out looking up at the sky, when I saw what looked like a UFO. It was a white orb, rather large, and it shot straight into my line of vision, then moved in a few circles and shot away. It came back, and did the same thing, only it was closer and larger, and made no sound. I immediately got creeped out and walked from my room, around the corner, and was about to walk into my mum's room, but the door was locked. Her door was facing the stairs, which went down to the living room slash kitchen. Suddenly, I heard someone coming up the stairs, and a snorting sound. I looked down, and all I saw was this tall, slender figure walking up the stairs straight at me. I remember saying, Dad? But then I saw that it was something inhuman. I immediately froze in fear. The creature, or whatever it was, was tall, slender, had two slits for a nose, large black eyes, and got right up into my face, continuing to make that awful snorting sound. Kind of like a pig. I couldn't scream. I couldn't move. I just collapsed as it towered over me, and bent down pushing its face right into mine. Finally, I blacked out. The next thing I knew, I was being awoken by my mum at the bottom of the stairs. She asked me how I got there, and I said that I must have sleepwalked. I'll never forget that face, and that snorting sound. And I think I'll die of a heart attack, if I ever see it again. I was about nine or ten. It was late at night, and my bed was right under the window. I was just gazing out looking up at the sky, when I saw what appeared to be an unidentified flying object. It was a white orb, rather large, and it shot straight into my line of vision then moved in a few circles, then shot away. It came back and did the same thing, only it was closer and larger, and made no sound. I immediately got creeped out, and walked from my room around the corner, and was about to walk into my mum's room, but the door was locked. Her door was facing the stairs, which went down to the living room slash kitchen. Suddenly, I heard someone coming up the stairs, and a snorting sound. I looked down and saw this tall, slender figure walking up the stairs straight at me. I remember saying, Dad? But then I saw that it was something inhuman. I immediately froze in fear. 
The creature, or whatever it was, was tall, slender, had two slits for a nose, large, black eyes, and got right up into my face, continuing to make that awful snorting sound, kind of like the sound a pig makes. I couldn't scream, I couldn't move, I just collapsed as it towered over me and bent down, pushing its face right into mine. Finally, I blacked out. The next thing I knew, I was being awoken by my mum at the bottom of the stairs. She asked me how I got there, and I said I must have sleepwalked. I'll never forget that face, and that snorting sound. I think I'll die of a heart attack, if I ever see it again. When I was about 11, I was living with my grandmother. My bed was in the corner of my room, with the long side against the wall, and right up against the window. I slept with my head towards the wall, and I was usually turning towards the wall with the window. This window was a weird size, and didn't have any blinds, just curtains. The curtains hung in front of the window, so there was a small gap towards the side of the window where you could see into or out of my room if you were standing at the right angle. I was laying in bed trying to fall asleep when I turned my eyes towards the window and saw something standing there looking right at me. It was just a silhouette, but something about the way it was shaped just felt wrong. The head was large, the body was a little too skinny, and the way it was bent over just didn't feel right at all. I tried to act like I was asleep, and rolled over ever so slightly to try and get a better look, but it stood back up and ran away. It was tall, at least six foot. I hopped out of bed and ran into the living room where my grandmother was watching the 10 o'clock news. I told her I'd seen someone looking into my window. She grabbed a flashlight and ran out. I followed her, and we looked around, trying to figure out what it was. We couldn't see anything at all, and after that night, we set the curtains further back, so they completely blocked out the window. My husband and I recently moved out of Georgia, but before we left, we were staying at his parents' house. His parents' house is newly built, so it doesn't really seem like the type of place to be feeling like something is out of place. At his parents' house, they have cameras everywhere. They both are police officers. Like I said, it doesn't feel like the kind of place something would go wrong. Around three days before our move out of state, it was roughly around 9.30 at night, as I was using the restroom and craving a snack. So after I went into our bedroom where we were staying, which is a finished basement, I persuaded my husband into getting a snack with me. I walked out of the room first, but as I got to the door of our bedroom, I got the feeling like someone was behind it. So I slowly opened the door and looked behind it. Nothing was there, so I shrugged it off, closed the door, and continued into the kitchen. A few minutes later, my husband came into the kitchen and asked if I was hiding behind the door before he opened it. I told him no, but that I felt like someone was also behind the door as I opened it. I forgot to mention this earlier. His dad was on duty, and his mum was with one of his siblings at one of their football games. So essentially, we were alone. We both felt uneasy, but let it go. His siblings and his mum came home 15 to 20 minutes later, and we forgot about it. Fast forward to us living in our new apartment. I forgot to mention, but we have a dog 
Alex. Who's a pointer? And we have a cat, Freya. And just a little insight by apartment. It's basically a townhouse. We have a garage and an upstairs. No one is below or under us. We've been living in the apartment for about four months. And every now and then, Alex will look up into the attic and slightly turn his head. And sometimes all the hairs on his back will stand up like no tomorrow. And he will get in this defensive mode. Freya's eyes will go wide and she'll creep around to wherever Alex is staring. Some may think this is completely normal for a hunting dog and a domestic cat, but not to me, as I'm the one who's been with them since birth and have a little more knowledge on how they normally act. And since I do, I'll give my point of view on how they normally are. Alex, he's the sweetest, most gentle dog you'll ever meet. He loves Freya and small babies. He lets dogs rough him up at the park because he's just too gentle and will not fight back. Freya is laid back and doesn't care. She acts like a 20 year old cat, but barely a year old. Anyway, continuing on. The other day, my husband was in our home office and he thought I'd snuck up on him and was hovering over his shoulder. But when he turned around, I wasn't there and he realized I was still at work. I just want to know what we've experienced and what it could mean. It was a very beautiful night in Panama City Beach. The stars were out, crisp and clear, about 50 degrees outside, very calm, no real breeze, and absolutely gorgeous. Not desolate, but not crowded either. It was literally the perfect night. I was at Pier Park, which is a big shopping area, main street kind of thing, with a pier at the end of it on the beach. I walked out a little ways onto the boardwalk that takes you to the beach, and noticed what I thought was someone jogging on the beach. Which was weird, because joggers pretty much always have a headlamp or flashlight, if they are out this late. Whatever this thing was, didn't. About the time I noticed they were going really fast to be a jogger, or a runner, or Usain Bolt for that matter. They were right near the water's edge, going what had to be at least 30. Their legs weren't moving. It was just this strange silhouette, moving very fast. It finally disappeared over one of the sand dunes. I'm very, very skeptical, and usually find stuff like this to be completely absurd. I don't know what it was. Alien? Ghost? Some insanely efficient Olympic track runner? I don't know. Me and my girlfriend both saw it and it creeped us the hell out. It moved in a way that followed the contour of the sand and was really, really weird. Hey guys, it's Mort here. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed tonight's tales. Truly something extraordinary, pun intended. So um, this whole Area 51 business is pretty weird. Um, I wouldn't recommend that anyone go if you're thinking about it, just because I don't want anyone to get shot, because that is really bad and you could die. So, you know, maybe, maybe think twice before going. I thought it was all a joke. Is anyone taking this seriously? I mean, I don't live in the States, so I'm not really sure. Um, and honestly, I only really found out about it today. I've seen, I've seen memes about it. I've seen other stuff about it, but I, 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 you know, someone's tried to explain it to me, but I, I don't think I get it really. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment with your thoughts. That's always super nice. And why not subscribe and press the bell icon? Because you totally should. That's, that's the only reason I can give. You just should. Funny, YouTube tells me that not a lot of people get notified about my, uh, 
every time I upload, which is quite concerning. Um, so yeah, like the bell icon helps. Um, and you know, even if you don't want to see a video at a particular day, you can just swipe it away on your phone. But you know, just so that you know it's out there, I suppose. Uh, yes, my brother released a new video. It's really, really good. And you should watch it too, because it'll get your mind off the aliens that may or may not be watching you right now. Uh, it's, it's really fun. And by fun, I mean epic. And it's on screen. Oh, it's here. It's on the screen now. Oh my goodness. Well, as Pandora said, I'll be well, that means click it now. We're going to end the video there because she's going to come and scream in the room. Stay awesome, click the link, and I'll see you in the next one.